the word of god is alive and powerful sharper than any two edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart all scripture is god breathed and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of god might be mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works study to show thyself approved unto god a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth or accurately handling the word of truth the problem in today's christian down that we can note is a problem concerning the spiritual bona fide gift of a pastor teacher if lord god the father seems best to give us this gift through the mentor minister of lord god the holy spirit by the head of the department of the church which is none other but our lord and savior jesus christ so that we are here to communicate the truth and we will communicate the truth in the mental ministry of lord god the holy spirit provided when we are faithfully prepared to know and to learn and to apply the principles of bible doctrine and make it a, a real life a life that is pleasing unto jehovah and not to worry about the softness of this world but rather get back into the reality and tell what exactly is the duty of a pastor teacher that he has to be constantly diligently steady 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 the word of the lord and not only just steady the word of the lord but rather he has to teach not under the human ability but by the divine ability which lord god the holy spirit gives to him and prepares to him and that is required for him so that we can leave behind a legendary impact in this world not only in the world that has been fought with the physical realm but also in the world that we can see in the spiritual realm the physical realm because we need to stay fit we need to stay healthy and no matter how evil satan tries to consume us by the food that we may consume that's why we pray a prayer for the food father sanctify the food so that we can be alert we can be awake we can be constantly available not to be dulled off but the people turn out to become zombies the only reason why they become zombies and inner peace out believers is purely because they have not learned the importance of their health why they have to be cautioned why they have to be alert do you know why because they have to learn the word of the lord that's why they need to be alert if you are sick if you are weak do you think you can learn and that is where you need to understand you are losing your spiritual vigor because you are losing out your physical vigor as well your physical vigor will lose because you are not giving number one priority for the spiritual vigor that is what the spiritual health the spiritual reality the spiritual word of the lord that's why you lose concentration upon doctrine negligence of doctrine among the five cycles of discipline which lord gives us number one you lose your health and even that could be called for you a warning discipline so that in the first stage itself you will be taught to learn if you are losing out your physical attractiveness or your physical strength that means you are losing out your spiritual strength from inside you are being arrogant towards bible doctrine negligence towards bible doctrine that's what you can learn that's what you can study that's what you can confirm but what is happening today miracles crusade healings crusade and i don't deny the sovereign power of god in miracle or healing every breath you take is a miracle every second your heart pumps out the blood is a miracle every word of the lord is a healing to us so that we know that no weapon that is formed against thee will prosper that we know that a man's mind which is stayed upon bible doctrine will be in perfect peace and we know that we are not here to destroy our soul by taking some dope addiction drug addiction or xyz trends pertaining to drunkenness and we know we need to stay alert to purchase the time because lord wants through us to do a great business a business of bible doctrine a business of maximum glorification of christ as we go along with the cognitive self confidence with the reality of cognitive independence and with the reality of cognitive invincibility that is what you and i have been called you and i have been noted you and i have been confirmed 
But what are we doing today? As a pastor teacher, if you don't have the bona fide gift, never you will have the burden to take it down like the Hebrew word masa to get it along for you as a ten, ten, ten cement bags thrown out for you upon the top floor if you're standing down on the below. That is what the word masa means. Burden, so that you can smash out. And we are burdened enough as a pastor teacher to be smashed out to make every believer perfection and complete in the knowledge of Lord as we go along in the walking of the operating power will of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. That is what you and I have to note. That is what you and I have to come. That is what you and I have to realize. Which is a day-by-day -day process. Which is a day-by-day -day method. Which is a day-by-day -day investigation in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. But what is happening in our churches, dear brethren? The pastors do not know the realization of Bible doctrine. The pastors do not consider the importance of Bible doctrine. That is what it is happening in our churches. Because I hardly believe that the pastors have gone through the pastoral epistles, which is First Timothy, Second Timothy, and Titus, to understand what is there exactly about the godliness. And we have in First Timothy six three to five. If anyone advocates a different, that is a false doctrine, and does not agree with the sound words, those words, that is what those doctrines of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and with the doctrine conforming to godliness, which is you, Sabaya, super grace. And if there is a pastor who doesn't conform to godliness, which is you, Sabaya, true spiritual life, what he is, he is consighted, is blind arrogance, and he understands what? Nothing. He doesn't know the rule which Apostle Paul has kept for us in the mystery doctrine of the church age, this unique spiritual life in the church age. He doesn't know why he has been called as a pastor in the church age. And that is what it has been consighted because of his blind arrogance to open up the word of the Lord and to read. And that blind arrogance will once again put back why he has been not been under the controlling power ministry of Latkat, the Holy Spirit. And why he is not in the controlling power of ministry of Ladgar, the Holy Spirit? Because he doesn't use rebound, that's why. And when he fails to use rebound, what is going wrong? Everything is going wrong to be called as a Christian. His walk of life, his manner of methodologies, everything. You cannot tell only this is going wrong, everything. His three categories of love, love towards God is wrong, then love towards impersonal friends will be absolutely wrong. When the personal love is right, then everything will be impersonal also will be absolutely right. Therefore, rebound is so much essential. Therefore, to walk in the Spirit is so much essential. To live in the Spirit is so much essential because the Shakina glory which indwells in you has to control you permanently with its tabernacle. And greater our negligence to know the simple truth, the importance of this great godliness, the super grace life. Such kind of a pastor is consighted, said First Timothy 6, 3 through 5a. He is blind, he is arrogant, and he understands nothing, but he has a morbid interest in controversial questions. And furthermore, disputes about words out of which arise only envy, strife, abusive language, evil suspicions, and constant friction between men of deprived mind that is distorted by reversionism and deprived of the truth, blackout of the soul, or scar tissue in the soul. This is what they are constantly sparking around, igniting around. Disputes between the men who have been deprived mind and deprived of the truth. And the pastor should thoroughly make known about the importance of this godliness, about this unique spiritual life, about the reality of the word. And if the pastor doesn't concentrate upon this reality of the word, then he will be a man of deprived mind, a man of deprived of truth. And aren't we noticing them today in our pulpits? And why is apostasy rampant to the core? And where is the origin of the apostasy? It starts in the pulpit and ends in the pulpit. And why aren't we noticing them? 
we will notice them under the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, when you grow up through a strict discipline of 1 Corinthians 9, 24-25 to the maturity of Hebrews 5, 14. Strong meat belongs to them with the self-discipline process. They can discern what is right and what is wrong under the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, through the daily intake of Bible doctrine. That is what daily renovation of your thinking day by day process. Then only you can learn. Then only you will come. Then only you will realize. And that is the process wherewith you and I have to learn. And that is the methodology which Lord God the Holy Spirit uses for you to teach. And it cannot go anything against the truth. Neither it can go further from the truth. It has its boundary in the truth. And we are here to build up our boundary in Bible doctrine in the truth. And the problem, since the pastors do not realize the reality of the polytheism of privileges, the portfolio of invisible assets, which are the riches in grace for Christ, in Christ given for us, what are we ending up? Ending up in vanity, ending up in lies, ending up in sheer of morality. Rising envies, frictions, controversial questions and disputes. And out of which arise definitely envy, strife, abusive language, evil suspicions, and constant friction between men of deprived mind that is distorted by reversionism and deprived of the truth, which is nothing but completely blacked out of the soul. Your soul has been definitely blocked out. And scar tissue in your soul. What is the root cause? The three arrogant skills. Self-justification, self-absorption, and self-deception. And who will be these men? Do you know? They will be men, the lovers of self, lovers of money, distorted scales of value. That's what the lovers of money means. That means they don't have a proper importance towards Bible doctrine and they go on looking upon to exchange the glory of Lord to a lie, exchange the glory of Lord for some pieces of bread or for some handful of barley. And they will be boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful and unholy. And this arrogant individual will exhibit different counterpart sins at different times in relation to different challenges to his blotted opinion upon himself. And the pressure of arrogance causes one sin to submerge and its counterpart becomes evident. A mental attitude sin of resentment gives way to anger, deceit, and open defiance. Arrogance is always a contributing factor to disobedience and rebellion. The malady is not limited to what else. What began as a child's disrespect for parents may later escalate into disobedience to all authority and the destructive use of drugs and alcohol as well. And that is what we are going to look. Since appreciation is a part of capacity for life, an arrogant person, devoid of both, is ungrateful. He never appreciates the salvation. He never appreciates the importance of Bible doctrine. He never appreciates the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. An ungrateful person is thoughtless, unkind, even vicious to those in this periphery, unholy. The rejection of doctrine causes lacks of appreciation into the reality of Bible doctrine, dear brethren, wherewith many men are being failed. And that is what you and I have to note. Therefore, the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher is so much essential and so much important that never you will understand in this life the importance of it. And which way you want to go, you decide. We shall continue in the next tape. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that was given to fellowship with thee through thy word. We thank thee for the privilege that was given to our fellowship with thee through, through the time which have been chosen for us to be faithful enough. For we ask it in Christ's name, Sovereign Lord. Amen. Thank you.